Hi. Um, as far as I know, it's between. It's an area that's fought over between Hamas and Israel, and that involves part of Palestine. In all honesty, I think that what's going on in Palestine, while necessary, is kind of being overcooked in the press right now. Uh, I don't find that much information from BBC news coverage. If I want to know what's happening in the world, I watch Al Jazeera or I watch Russia Today and never watch BBC news footage. The crisis in Palestine has been going on now since 1948 when the British withdrew and the Jewish National Council proclaimed the State of Israel and then Israel's War of Independence. Much of the land set aside for Palestinians was now under the control of Israel or other Arab countries. This was to be the beginning of a long war. In 1987 the Palestinians began an uprising against the Israeli occupation demanding independence. The Israeli military responded by sending in troops. There was casualties on both sides. 400 Israeli lost their lives, as did 1,500 Palestinians. Since then, the war has continued with no real peaceful end in sight. Bombs continue to kill innocent people every day in Palestine, with other stories such as ISIS and Ebola flooding the press. The Gaza crisis is forgotten. We interviewed Professor John Robertson of the University of the West of Scotland and Palestine campaigner and former MSP Pauline McNeil to find out their views on the situation. I'd, I'd see it as, as almost genocidal. That the um, I think what we're witnessing is, is something comparable to the end of the North American Indian tribes, that gradually the, the Palestinians will be squeezed out of their own land almost entirely. And I think that's what's happening now. There's so many things happening in the conflict. There's the West Bank, where probably today's news is about yeah. the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip, the occupation continues and Israel's made no commitment to create a Palestinian state, which is the British foreign policy position, as the foreign policy position of America and all of the European states. Yeah, I think, I think there, there is actually research evidence from the, the Glasgow Media Group, um, who have done several pieces of research, and they have some books, one called Bad News, Bad News in Israel, and what they found, the people they sampled, thought that the, that the Israelis were the, the, the Aboriginal people, that they had been there first, and that the Palestinians were immigrants, which is the exact opposite of the situation, that, that you know, in the 1940s there was a small Jewish community in, in Palestine, and Palestine was an Arab um, area as part of the old Turkish Empire. My concern at the moment is that the lack of progress on the creation of a Palestinian state is already leading to more uprising and more violence. I fear there will be more deaths because Palestinians will never give up their fight for a, a just homeland that they are entitled to. I also think that Israel will become ever more unpopular the longer it holds out and not concede the fact that they should be supporting the creation of a Palestinian state. Uh, UK coverage is, is, I think, is bordering on disgraceful and the level of bias is very much from an Israeli perspective. And, uh, and I think it characterises the, the Palestinians always as the problem. And yet you would, I think if you look at the history, clearly the Palestinians are dispossessed. The Palestinians were there before and the Israeli state is a, is a growth in that area. I don't, I don't question the right of Israelis to, you know, to, to live there. But, um, but it's fairly clear that the BBC in particular present the Palestinians as the problem. Well, the BBC's got various outlets, so not all the channels are the same. But on some of the BBC coverage, the language they use uh, is almost uh, discriminatory to Palestinians and crucially it would not put out the Disasters and Emergency Committee appeal at the last conflict on Gaza because they said it was political while well, Palestinians were dying. Um, they also always refer to the resistance um, as the militants and extremists uh, as if there aren't any militants and extremists on the other side. I don't believe it's balanced coverage, and the BBC have taken a great deal of criticism on that some of it's fair, some of it is unfair, but the BBC really need to think, realign their coverage. 
So some of it's good, but some of it is definitely unfair and unjust to the cause. Right. Thank you very much for that. Thanks a lot. We gon' pray for the innocent Cause right now it don't make sense Right now it don't make sense Let's talk about Chantel